Hey guys, Serpent X here. I got some goodies. Let me show you what I got. All right, so from good old New Egg, just saw Mr. Uh, Paul's Hardware bring JJ over and talk about the B-Series boards. I had my eye on this guy for a long time. The reason I went ATX is because this is going to be a media system build and it's replacing my boy's old living room computer. Unfortunately, I don't have a good case to match it. It's an old NZXT case, top mounted power supply. Uh, a little bit uh, aged, but it will do the job for now. I'll post a uh, picture of the case that I'm looking at getting uh, once prices get uh, straightened out. So here's the Asus Tough B450M Plus gaming motherboard. Uh, they classify it as UTX now and it supports Aura Sync, of course. I got, I'm going to pair it with, looks like the Ryzen 5 2600. I didn't get the 2600X. Again, this is going in my boy's system, so they should be just fine. Uh, cable mods, uh, RGB strip, also supports Asus Aura Sync. Uh, a couple of Corsair SP120s. Uh, that's not really an EVGA power supply, it's Corsair um, 750. Some Noctua um, fan headers, because this board only supports three, and on this case I can do one, two, three, four in the front. Uh, so I'm going to split them. Some team RG team T4, excuse me. I don't know why I said team. Yeah, T4 is Delta R RGB memory sticks. It's only 300, uh, 3,000 megahertz, not 3,200. Um, again, going to my boys, so not exactly. Don't need the best of the best. And this little guy I got for myself. So seeing Paul, Kyle, and and others basically install an OS on an SSD. And then, you know, whenever they have to work on a system or something like that or switch from system to system, they just take the SSD with them. So the plan is install Windows 10 on this, all my benchmarks, basic games, uh, which is going to fill up really quick because it's a 120 gig. But at least that way I can let my boys use their current hard drive for all their games. And when they clutter it up with silliness, I don't have to worry about it. I could easily grab the case uh, or the system. Uh, unplug their hard drive, plug mine in, and just boot on up into Windows or whatever operating system I want. So, time to get started. I'm going to start throwing this together, and I'll bring you on for that. All right, let's see uh, what kind of goodies they got for us. Yeah, that's pretty nice. PS2, USB 2.0, DVI, HDMI, Type-C, uh, 3.1, 3.0, audio. Doesn't have an audio, uh, an advanced codec, but we don't need to be finding the best sound. SATA over here, so 6 SATA, good media storage, 4 DIMMs, RGB header. Uh, CPU fan. Another fan header chassis. Chassis. M.2 slot. Should be able to run an NVMe. A full bandwidth. Um, what is that? So, USB 2. USB 3, speaker, front panel connectors, audio, audio, yeah, there we go. It also comes with uh, these ROG stickers, or Tough Series, not ROG, sorry, Asus Tough stickers, uh, SATA cable. It's two, two of them a pair. The Certificate of Reliability. Tough land guard, capacitors, chokes, MOSFETs. That's pretty neat. Tells us the actual thermal shock test method, all that good stuff. 
And then this uh, rear I.O. shield is pretty sweet looking. All right, guys, not exactly the best cable managed computer case. Uh, looks like a string of wires. These wires over here has got to go to the side case fans uh, that I don't like, but if we move that out of the way. There's our T-Force uh, RGB memory, our stock uh, Ryzen cooler, um, RAV cooler. Uh, the motherboard's all connected, good to go. All the fans in here, unfortunately, are three pin connectors, not four pin, which is why I have extra cables. This SSD could be a little bit more secure, but this is just a temporary setup. Um, I already power cycled it on, got to the BIOS. You always want to test your setup outside, maybe on your motherboard box before you, you, you actually install it into your case. Otherwise, it'd be a problem. Uh, Paul's hardware rule of thumb, and honestly, it's been mine for the longest. Um, Never put your side panel on. Don't build your system inside your case and put your side panel on. Because nine times out of ten, it's not going to power on. You're not going to get any boot uh, cycles, codes. All right, and continuing from the build, guys. Um, this motherboard is definitely great if you're going to be using the 2600, uh, 2600X. However, I would urge caution if you're going to be overclocking the 2700 or 2700X. At the stock clocks, it looks like it will be able to maintain it, but I think the VRMs are going to get highly uncomfortable, which uh, I would provide some insight or detail uh, towards that uh, later or point you in the right direction because I'm not the best at telling you uh, what the uh, VRMs and MOSFETs and the companies and the, and the features and what they're rated for. But looking at this board, it's definitely capable of running uh, SLI. You can use your M.2 storage at 32 gigabytes uh, speed. Uh, it's got your USB 3.0, your 3.1 Gen 2, and your Type C. So it's definitely uh, a board that will give you all the the latest and greatest features. Uh, again, I got this from Newegg uh, as a combo pack with the 2600 for around 220 bucks. Uh, I believe there was a mail-in rebate, so basically 200 bucks. Really of steal of a deal. So I grabbed it. A uh, great uh, medium medium uh, you know gaming build or media center uh, living room build. Um, I would highly recommend though with this board that you grab uh, a memory kit from the QVL list like check whatever motherboard you decide check the QVL list before you buy it because uh, the memory for me was temperamental I chose the team uh, group memory uh, the Delta 2 Delta T force um, RGB which is not on this list I was able to get it close to DOCP, which is the XMP profile that the motherboard sh lets you choose, but I couldn't run it at, you know, 3,000 megahertz. I had to leave it at auto, then drop down, choose 2933, and then go into the memory timings and choose 16, 18, 18, 38 manually. For those that don't know how to do any of that, um, this board and this CPU is really great. You just plug it in, make sure you get some memory, um, you know, on the QVL list. And then go ahead and just move over to overclocking. Asus board has got five-way optimization. So when you hit start tune, it will automatically tune to the best frequency. However, with the stock cooler that I was using, I was not able to get where I wanted. And using NVIDIA Shadow Play, because I didn't have OBS in the machine, I'm going to show you a little recording, and I'll try to be quick and run through this real um, as fast as possible but as you can see I'm using the ASUS AI suite so this is inside your operating system overclocking if you're not familiar with BIOS I prefer BIOS but you can manage the, sh the CPU switching frequency uh, 300 to 350 uh, kilohertz is, is you know more or less for uh, you know high overclocks if you needed to do that uh, extreme uh, for power phase control low line calibration uh, and then SOC load line calibration. However, for the 2600, I did not have to touch any of this. You may need to adjust these parameters though for the 2700 and 2700X, which is why I urge caution because you might be uh, pushing the limits of the VRMs. I believe they rated it to 120C uh, according to ASUS website, which I have linked in the description below. Um, but you don't want to push it. You don't. You don't want to be. Un you don't want the VRMs to be uncomfortable. Uh, of course, in the turbo. Uh, Evo section of the AI suite. I was able to set up some profiles 3.85 auto from ASUS auto-tuning my 4 gigahertz my 4.1 and my 4.2 
Uh, I'm currently running at 4 gigahertz, as you can see at the bottom, uh, for 1.34. 1.35 is the sweet spot, but I wanted to see where, like, if I could drop the voltage down and get those extra temps or cooler temps because I'm using a stock cooler. Um, here is the fan control. The motherboard comes with three PWM, uh, you know, fan, you know, four pin fan, uh, but one is going to be used for your CPU, so you really only have one for the front and one for the rear. Uh, but you can use Fan Expert little app down there or in the AI suite to control your fans if you want silent performance, turbo or standard. Uh, they have the feature called PC Cleaner. I didn't dive into that because I use CC Cleaner. Not really necessary for me. Uh, easy Update, which is also over there on the left. Um, it's for updating your BIOS, which I updated my BIOS from the BIOS. You can, when you load in, you can use the Internet Flash tool. Uh, really easy, really simple. Auto detects, you know, what the closest server, and then just updates uh, for you. But you can also update uh, from within the operating system. I just prefer BIOS. Next. Um, oh, and I, I am running the latest BIOS 0403 at this current time of filming uh, on August 26, 2000, or August, yeah, August 26, 2018. Right? Right. Anyways, um, my days are all screwed up. I stayed up really late trying to get this board fine tuned, and the, the CPU or the overclocking of the memory and the overclocking of the CPU gave me a hard time. More the CPU than the memory because I, I want that precise tune. I want to get that perfect voltage for the CPU. I want to keep temps low. I want to keep a stable uh, overclock but low voltage or as low as the system will allow me. The next tool that you can use is Ryzen Master, um, which is pretty cool. I'd like to, I, I need to know or I'm curious to know real quick. Let me see if I could go back to that. You see how my first core says fastest core in the system, and then my third core or my fourth core says it's, it's the second fastest core of CCX2. Third core, I believe, is like uh, the third core is the first fastest of CCX1, and then my fifth core is the uh, the fastest of CCX2. I want to know if you have a Ryzen system and you're using Ryzen Master, does it give like the, is your second CPU like the fastest, and then your your sixth one is the second fastest with CCX2. I don't know. Um, that's a pretty neat feature because I didn't see that in Ryzen Master before when I was uh, using it. Uh, of course, there's other features you can manage in um, in Ryzen Master. Uh, I wouldn't touch the memory voltage uh, again if you're using DOCP or you're manually overclocking, but you can adjust the megahertz as well. This will apply it, but we'll need to restart. And up at the top there, you can do an apply a test. And that over here, um, this apply and test it's basically going to run a stress test, which I'm going to show you here. It's in the settings. Uh, you can set the interval uh, in seconds. Um, you know, turn on live monitoring, speed, temperature, show histogram, so a little chart showing how your temps and, and everything was running. Uh, the proc hot, I wouldn't disable it because that's protecting you from overheating. Um, you know, set your stress test. Uh, you know, stress test duration. Uh, you can choose whether it's your CPU or memory or both. And then you can check for updates. Uh, last but not least, another feature that a gamer will, would like is uh, the DTS uh, sound equalizer manager. Of course, I can't click on anything. Uh, well, two things, because I didn't have any sound or speakers or headphones plugged in. But tacticals for first-person shooters, soundscape for MMOs like WoW, and then aerial for uh, RTAs. Um, the problem, though, with this board, and I would recommend checking out actually hardware overclocking Billzoid uh, because he talks about the B-series motherboard. Some of the B-series um, overclocking with them is uh, pretty good, pretty easy, but you want to be concerned if you're going to be overclocking as much with the B-series that you watch the VRMs and make sure that you're getting uh, a great board here. I will have this video linked in the description below so check for that, uh, but he goes over uh, he, he gives more analytic details about the VRM, the MOSFETs, and stuff like that, um, which, you know, the chokes, um, which I prefer because I want to know more about this board. Again, this is going to be a media system build, so it's going to be more or less my boys playing it, and they play uh, lesser, not lesser games, but less intensive games. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to run it at stock clocks and let the system decide what it wants to XFR to or... Uh, boost up to um, but 
I would not or I don't recommend overclocking a 2600, a 2700X or a 2700 on this because you're probably going to be pushing these things to the limit. Uh, but that's up to you. It's your it's your computer. Um, and last but not least, the the other hard thing is the memory, man. That's that was that was annoying only because I thought I got it from the QVL. Damn, Asus. What I was looking at was um, an actual QVL list for another motherboard, the ATX version, not the B450M Plus Gaming, and that's what messed me up. So, anyways, um, motherboard's great. It's got plenty of great features. Uh, I haven't messed around with Store uh, MI. Uh, I would check out the video for, from Linus from that. Basically, you're using uh, one drive to boost another, um, but their performance metrics were a little bit uh, janky or it wasn't performing at all so until I see StoreMI actually uh, giving me something, some fruitful results, I'm probably not going to use it. Anyways, I'm using a PNY uh, small SSD which runs just fine and is great and that's pretty much it. I will be having a more detailed video on overclocking and the troubles I had on Ryzen 2600 um, but stay tuned for that like, share, subscribe, and comment below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.